Here's a book reading from the book Eagles in the Flesh, A Wild Hang Gliding Adventure by Eric B.K. Chapter 1, Riders on the Storm. Help! Here I am and I think I'm going to die. This is what's going through my mind as my teammate CG and I are being yanked backwards through the atmosphere. All I can do is pray. Pray that what I see happening to him isn't going to happen to me. Both of us viewing the earth below. Both of us know its sight is now a luxury. A luxury that is not going to last. We've left ourselves no way out. No way to escape. It's time to live or die. 300 feet above us is an enormous storm cloud. Its dark spinning bottom looks like an upside down whirlpool. Its center holes trying to suck us in. Thousands of feet below us, the precious earth looks like a wrinkled piece of soft green felt. Diving our hang gliders, noses pointed straight down, wings bucking violently racing futilely for the ground my mind blaming my teammate for all the things gone wrong my hands grip the control bar tightly like a trapeze artist without a net why will the glider go faster praying for it not to break inside my helmeted head rushed panic sweat and terror the wrong cloud the wrong place the wrong time. Me and CG flying our hang gliders beyond the manufactured stated speed limit not to exceed. The gliders push 70 miles per hour as we travel backwards on the verge of getting sucked up uncontrollably into a huge black and white lightning included cumulonimbus storm cloud. Like Icarus in the ancient Greek legends, we have flown too close to danger. We have pushed each other too far. Our egos, they're out of control, dragging us in the, under the bottom of the massive sucking whirlpool. There's plenty of reasons why we got here, because I am the young upstart pilot and was trying to outperform the older, more experienced CG. That old man taught me well over the last few years, too well. It's made me cocky and overconfident. And now it's the student competing against the teacher. No, scratch that. It's students plus a teacher competing against Mother Nature. Her new rules of survival constantly changing. She shows us no mercy as she drags us higher through the atmosphere. Today's subject, how to fly a hang glider fast enough to escape the overpowering currents that are getting vacuumed up into the bottom of the wrong cloud. We are trapped under the cloud like two rats scrambling on a slippery tile floor trying to escape from being sucked up into an industrial vacuum cleaner. The nozzle of the vacuum, the center of the whirlpool, dragging us into the huge cloud. With our gliders pointed towards the earth, trying to go down, flying forward as fast as their aerodynamic design will allow, we are still getting sucked up backwards. Our progress incorrect. We enter the bottom of the angry cloud, tail first. Upon entering the storm, all my eyesight goes white. Many shades of white. Bright white, gray white, dirty white. A big room filled with white terror. Oh yeah, and panic. I can feel the sweat leaking from my helmet, rolling down my forehead and blowing into my eyes. But it's salty blindness doesn't matter because on both sides of my eyelids I can see nothing. Strong winds force tears from my eyes, causing my sunglasses to ice over. Thunder cracks inside the storm cloud, shaking my brains. Frustration, fear, anger, terror, panic. Powerful emotions churn like an electrical current between my ears. If I want to live, I think, I got to relax. I got to focus. Focus on what? Everything inside this cloud is a white soaking hell. Relax. How? The violent turbulence inside the cloud is thwarting my efforts at keeping the glider from flipping over and breaking. My mind begins losing to panic. I begin feeling small, scared, insignificant, lost in this vast, turbulent, wet 
cold white room. Feeling like a rat in a spinning clothes dryer, half full of wet snow. My eyelids start icing up, all ten fingers freezing. My mouth gulping against air sickness. Oh God, I pray, get me out of here alive and I will never fly again. <laughs> my arms start to tire. My instruments are covered in frost. The wing is handling lethargically, acting like it is covered in ice. I am losing track of reality, losing track of time. How long have I been in here? I can't see. Help me, CG. I want my mom. <laughs> I think I'm going to shit my pants and die. And yet, I'm strangely concerned with the rescue crew finding me with poop in my pants. And just as I'm contemplating my mortifying end, I see a patch of blue over there at the cloud's border. I dive for the blue, but it keeps moving away, torturing me like a moving target. A target found in an amusement park booth where the gun is manipulated and $100 is wasted to get a $3 teddy bear. I finally hit the elusive target, my reward punching out the side of the tall white cloud into the bright blue blinding sky. Oh, what a feeling. I am free from that monster. Thank God. But just when I think I am saved... I am not. Oh, no. Disoriented and alone, the earth thousands of feet below me, the features of her surface are not making sense. Where in the hell am I? Cool water droplets run down my face, the ice melting away, the numbers on the defrosted altimeter displaying an astonishing 17,500 feet. My fingers start thawing. My mind enjoys the pain, the pain of life. But that tall evil cloud, the one with the white room, the one that tried to kill me, the one I've just flown out the side of, the one that climbed straight up to 35,000 feet, the one I'm now 1,000 feet below me, the one I was running away from as fast as my wing could fly, the one that makes me feel like an insect running from a toppling skyscraper, that one terrifying cloud, it's right over there. Holy shit, total rush of hope. One of those flashes remember for the rest of your life. About 200 feet below me, and half a mile distant, racing for the light, I spot my teacher, my best friend, CG, with my head clearing, sunglasses drying, pants clean. I'm starting to recognize the features of the earth again. We are deep over the West Elk Wilderness, a landscape of huge timbered covered mountains without roads and no places to land. Seeing CG flying off into the distance, heading for the highway in a better life, I am on his tail. We escape from the storm, figure out where we are, and head south out of the West Elk Mountains. Our next danger? Like we need more danger. Flying over the Black Canyon, a 2,000 foot deep black gorge cut into the dark rock by a white raging river and living along its rim an unfriendly tall green forest. We have endured the violence, the blindness, the ice, the turbulence, and the white room. All that is left in our path for survival is crossing the Black Canyon. Then I hear it, a sound that makes me ill. A sound that no hang glider pilot will ever mistake. Like two metal baseball bats hitting each other head on at full swing. The sharp sound of crack snapping aluminum. Modern day hang gliders are made out of carbon fiber, heavy duty Dacron, space age mylar sailcloth, and steel cables. And aircraft grade aluminum. The olden days of bamboo and plastic are long gone. Replaced by wings built sleek, fast, stable, and strong. Manufacturers of this type of aircraft put their reputations and lives on the line to perfect the wings they build. And if I may be so bold as to say it, a hang gliding wing is a marvel of modern aviation. These wings we fly are created on drawing boards by designers, perfected on computers by engineers, tested on the backs of trucks, 
in wind tunnels and taken to the air by Top Gun test pilots and amateur adventurers like me and CG and our insane crew of fellow pilots affectionately known as Gang Green. For 10 years, this team of green-clad pilots tested every way possible to break hang gliders, automobiles, hearts, rules, and our minds. In this particular case, the structural glider test being performed by CG is a full dive, reaching 70 miles per hour under a thunderhead, attempting to escape the tractor beam suction created by a building storm cloud while being bounced around by ruthless turbulence like a golf ball in a cement mixer. This is definitely not in the manual. We cross the last of the mountain range and are closing in on the rim of the Black Canyon, the least perfect time for his glider to break. When it breaks and goes boom, it is ugly, ugly, ugly. His glider snaps in half, both wings slapping together, pinning CG in the middle, bonding him in the center of the wreckage like a walnut in the center of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. His body encased inside the white wonder bread, CG in gravity's control, is tossed sideways and begins spinning as if a plane in a World War II movie with one wing lost and goes into a spinning death spiral. After three revolutions, the disaster succumbs to gravity and rotates vertically, tumbling unevenly, a flat tire gyrating through the sky. <laughs> Aluminum tubing tears through the sail. The white and green cloth flaps like a sheet in the wind. The sailcloth contours around his body, looking like lovers wrapped up in white sheets. I watch as he and his lover, entwined as one, tumble over and over, falling towards the earth. It is the most helpless I have ever felt, watching as this once beautiful glider, its wreckage imprisoning CG, falls through the sky taking my friend away. I watch CG struggling for his life. His limbs continue to fight the pile of wreckage, the ruins dropping further away, spiraling down towards the earth. A sumo wrestler wedged in a coffin, tumbling out of an airplane, his fight for escape. <sighs> Unprepared to give in and die, Struggling against the heavy G-forces, hindering his survival, CG battles the falling, flapping wreckage and continues to reach for the handle of his emergency parachute. But gravity is winning, and he and his glider continue tumbling end over end. CG is falling to his doom. The Earth is coming up fast. Too fast. His luck is running out. Goodbye, CG! From the center of the destruction, out past the wreckage, into the blue sky, a package of life flies. CG's emergency parachute comes alive like a jellyfish floating in the sky, its canopy opening beautifully, slowing his descent. And of course, it is green, because CG gets a hard on over anything green. Thank God, you say. The poor man's troubles are now over. But, oh no. CG's troubles are just about to begin. CG is dropping towards the ground, strapped to a broken, tumbling hang glider, under a storm cloud that wants to kill him, riding an emergency parachute 4,000 feet above the earth, centered over a 2,000 foot deep black canyon. Having no other choice but to negotiate my own troubles, I fly beyond the canyon and lose sight of CG. I've had enough fun for one day, deciding at this point that I cannot outdo CG's present performance, and I begin searching for a safe place to land, vowing to help out later by identifying his body once they drag it out of the canyon.